Yo, what's poppin' guys, so welcome back to yet another episode in the RPG 2022 tutorial. If you remember last time, what we did is we created this character sheet, this character trait sheet, where we can add, use our character points to add um, characteristics to our player. Right? Remove them to all that good stuff. Today, I'd like to cover uh, the creation of... Um, oh my goodness, the creation of, oh my goodness, I'm dying, guys, I'm having a stroke. Title screen, that's the name of it, we're gonna make a title screen today, so we can kind of like put the game into an order. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a back, we're gonna start by making a backdrop, right? This backdrop, we're gonna put it up here. We're just gonna call it, title screen. And then, obviously, make sure you spend your time on your title screen. I'm just doing something basic for the sake of a, of a tutorial. We're going to do some basic. Um, let's do, like... Um, I'm just going to name it the name of the project. Tutorial 2022. Yeah, let's do some basic. There. I D a D a DK tutorial game yeah cool okay here's my title screen my very sloppily put together title screen again spend more time on your title screen add some cool art something like that so and I'll need to do oh yeah those are all stamps right that's what we did for those boop okay so Let's set up this backdrop. So when the green flag is clicked, we are going to run the title screen. And that's what we'll do. See, we're running these right away. And we don't want it to. Right? So just start by erasing that all. Boom. Hold up, I have a stroke. I should put that in here, actually. Hold up. Yeah, it's doing that here, too. There. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, Ooh. all right. So here's what we're gonna do. Set it up here. We're in the backdrop. We're gonna make a play button. Just make a new sprite. Call it play button. I'm gonna do something super basic again. Spend your time. Make it look nice. You know how it goes. Do some little basic art for a play button. Yep. And then I'll do this. Play. Fantastic. There we go. Here's our play button. Make sure you center it. Don't forget to always save. What we'll do is we'll put it where we want it. I want it right here. Mm, I forgot we should add a second costume. Duplicate this. And then we're going to add another costume. I'm going to make it a super bright white. Here, let's do this. I'm gonna make a super bright white, and then I'm gonna do an X. Just like this. There, just didn't do something like that. Two costumes. So, underneath this play button, I'll do when the green flag is clicked, we will go to the location that we set it at, which is in my case, negative 174 and 82. Again, you can always check your coordinates by looking right over here. And I have a mosquito bite on my ankle. It's very unfortunate. I had a mosquito bite on my lower eyelid yesterday. It was terrible. Um, anyways, and then we'll do show. And then in control, we'll grab a forever loop and put an if else statement inside of it. We'll come to sensing and do if touching mouse pointer. You'll switch the costume to two else switch the costume to one that gives us this super super basic effect where we play and whenever we touch it the x will appear next to it so you know that that's what you're selected on super basic super basic but super fun what is this what are you doing what are you showing for Tr true oh this is all backdrop number stuff right these need to be backdrop names 
set these up to backdrop names real quick. I just realized this. Because we started and then we added more backdrops, so those were broken. There, there we go. Because the backdrop names of those should be, yeah, one, two, and three. They're just named. Okay. Little bug, but we're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Okay, anyways. Back to the play button. Then we can do an if statement inside the mouse pointer and add go to sense and put mouse down inside of it then we will broadcast the attribute screen character attribute screen boom just like that and then we will optimally hide the play button fantastic then we can come to the backdrop and we can do character attributes screen and that will load attributes list. And then that will also switch backdrop to character creator. And then you can come to your numbers and add character attributes screen to what runs the number placement. And then you can come to the buttons and add character attribute screen to what actually runs the selector that makes them appear. And what you can do to make the make them appear even faster is you can do uh, like gen buttons, make a button so this is gen buttons, and take run without screen refresh. Put that right here, right underneath that, and then define gen buttons as the block, just like that. That should make them generate faster. So hit play, and then boom, all the buttons are there. See how it did that instantly? See, uh, as opposed to doing this, doing this. You see them all come in. Doing this. They appear instantly. But you'll see a little issue if you notice. It appears here cones are 300 even though there's only not that many cones. For some reason, Scratch likes to do this weird thing with clones for some reason. It's really odd. Right? They really like doing it. So... We can go about fixing this in a few ways. One, taking, getting rid of this button, getting rid of this block. You'll see that if we run the game, it only generates 21 this time. Still more than is needed. It's still more than is needed, but it lowers it a little bit. So there's a default, that's a downside of using that. Another thing that you can do, and slow it down a little bit, is usually putting a weight 0.01 in front of stuff in Scratch fixes issues. Scratch is really weird when it comes to like loading things. It's really odd. But a lot of the time putting a weight somewhere can fix it and then boom. Now it generated 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then fixed it. So there you go. That's that little fix in case you needed it. So anyways, now we generate the character points screen and then they can generate the character points. And then what we can do is we can make a new button. I'm just going to duplicate the play button and I'm going to call it um, the next button. I'm going to call it next button one because you might make more. We're going to replace the green flag with the character attribute screen. We're going to show it. We're going to move it down to here. Down to this corner. And then I'm also going to take the X and I'm going to move it to the other side. This is specifically for me. If yours looks different, you'll customize yours a little differently. Okay, and then we'll put it back on, and then we'll reassign the value, uh, the position value. 175, negative 151. Again, you can find that right over here. And then when the mouse is down, you can broadcast uh, ge oh, uh, generate world. Cool. And then it'll hide. And then when we receive generate world. And this is in the backdrop, sorry I didn't say that. We'll, broad, we'll switch backdrop to backdrop 1, and then this whole player thing will be accessed when you receive Generate World. You'll show, player hitbox, all good. And player hitbox, that will be like this. Oh, there we go. And then, this will need to be here first of all. Um like this and this part that we took off in I think last episode Let's set this to generate world awesome 
Now let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, we see that this play button is still there. Cool. And also, we didn't actually change the word play to next. I just realized that. Next. Let's change that up. Cool. Next. Okay. So we need to actually set it so that when the green flag is clicked, this thing hides. Okay, fantastic. So hit the play button, hit play. Character screen pops up, you can mess around with all these things, and then when you press on next, again, you, you, you can mess with that however it is. I'm not going to fix this, this little graphical bug, just because, you know, it's a tutorial. It doesn't really affect it too, too much. Hit next. And it generates this world. And then we'll be able to start moving around. But you'll also see that right here, the all these things are still on the screen. So what we'll do is we'll come to this number stamping. And we will get the variable generate world. We'll erase all. Right? And that will erase all these texts on screen. But these, these do something special. Right? So what we'll do is in this forever loop on the, on the start of clone, there's one that doesn't have a forever loop, and then there's one that does. In that forever loop, you're going to follow it all the way down to the bottom, and you're going to put in the bottom if, go to operators, grab an equals tab and put it in there, and put a one in the second bubble. I can zoom in a little bit, I'm sorry. And then put costume, or not costume, put backdrop name. And then you'll put delete this clone in there. What that does is when you hit this next button, it makes it switches the backdrop, right? It switches the backdrop to one. And then these are always checking if the back if the backdrop name is one, and if it is, then it'll delete itself. So we'll hit play. These appear. You hit next. Everything disappears except this stuff, which is odd, right? So what I'm guessing is happening here is when we're generating a world, we're erasing it all. Ah, right here. Do you see? This is still broadcasting this number placement. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit, you're gonna grab a stop, other scripts in the sprite, and you're gonna put it uh, uh, above the erase so that it stops the other scripts and then erases it. If you have it like this, it'll erase it, but then it probably instantly redraw it and then it stop it. So you wanna make sure that that stop is above the erase. Let's take a look now. Okay, hit next, and then boom, everything disappears, and then you are off into uh, your actual world that you were in. But now you see that our hitboxes are a little messed up. Why are our hitboxes messed up, you ask? Well, let's set our player's hitbox to 50. Right? And let's also make it go to the front just so we can see it. Okay, so the hitbox is there. You see the hitbox, it's right there. But the interactions aren't working. Why is this? So let's take a look. Right, let's go to the hitboxes. It's not actually broadcasting this interactions tab for some reason. And that's something we have to figure out. We figure out why it isn't doing that. There. If you just put the interactions on the bottom, for some reason, it makes it work. Let's just test this again, just in case. Okay, interactions are working. They're not interactions. Movement is working just fine. We touch this. And we still don't go. Okay. Even though... Okay, right. These backdrops. These backdrops need to be backdrop names. That's what it is. Because remember, we switched those earlier because we've added more costumes that had different numbers now. So it was waiting for this screen because this is costume one. Or, yeah, costume. This is backdrop number. We need backdrop name that actually has the correct system in place. Okay. Are you on the game? Fantastic. You move all the way to the side. When you hit the black bar, then our interactions work. Fan. Fantastic. All right, there we go. There's your basic title screen. Um, I'm not quite sure what we'll do in the next episode, but stick around because we'll be doing that next Sunday. I post episodes of this every single Sunday. So that's what we'll be doing. So thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because you're getting one step closer to making a better RPG. Well, you're right. I want to subscribe to the channel if you have a content that I made a lot. Also, I might be streaming when this video is out. So go ahead and check. I stream on YouTube and Twitch. You'll be able to find it on YouTube, but my Twitch is twitch.tv slash DKUniverseTV. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.